Hi friends, in this video we will see synthesis of thyroid hormones. Needless to say, they are synthesized in thyroid gland. In thyroid gland, we have follicles, parafollicular cells or C cells and these are blood vessels. This is basic histology of thyroid gland. Follicle has collared at the center, surrounded by follicular cells. Thyroxine and triiodothyronine are synthesized by follicle. C cells synthesizes calcitonin. Thyroxine and triiodothyronine are structurally and functionally similar. And term thyroid hormones is usually used to refer to these two hormones only. Calcitonin is different. It is involved in calcium and phosphate homeostasis, so it is usually discussed with parathyroid hormone. In this video also, we will focus only on these two hormones. So let's start. First step in thyroid hormone synthesis is active uptake of iodide. It is carried out by sodium iodide symporter. This uptake is against electrochemical gradient and energy for this transport is obtained from downhill influx of sodium. From cell, iodide is transported into the colloid by transporters called pendrin. Now parallel to this iodide trapping, the cell is synthesizing thyroglobulin. Thyroglobulin is a glycoprotein. These are tyrosine residues of thyroglobulin. As it is synthesized, it is stored in such secretory vesicles. The vesicle also has enzyme thyroid peroxidase on the intravesicular surface. Now the vesicle fuses with the apical membrane and releases thyroglobulin into the colloid. This also brings thyroid peroxidase on the cell membrane facing the colloid. Here it carries out several reactions. First it catalyzes oxidation of iodide into iodine. This iodine then binds with tyrosine. This binding is also catalyzed by thyroid peroxidase. Likewise, so many other tyrosine residues are also iodinated. This forms monoiodotyrosine, that is tyrosine with one iodine, and diiodotyrosine, that is tyrosine with two iodines. And these are more mono and diiodotyrosines. Now enzyme catalyzes coupling of some of such iodinated tyrosines. If one mono and one diiodotyrosine combines, it forms triiodothyronine. Here there are two possibilities. One is, we can have one iodine on outer ring and two iodines on the inner ring. This is active triiodothyronine or T3. And second is, two iodine on outer ring and one iodine on the inner ring. This is called reverse triiodothyronine or RT3. It has no biological activity. So this T3 is important here. Now if two diiodotyrosine combines, it forms tetraiodothyronine or T4. Quantitatively, much more T4 is synthesized than T3. The hormones thus synthesized are stored in colloid as part of thyroglobulin. Then when there is time for release, the thyroglobulin is taken up by the cell by process of endocytosis. Then lysosome fuses with this endocytic vesicle and releases its enzyme. The enzymes hydrolyze the thyroglobulin to form free T3, T4, monoiodotyrosine and diiodotyrosine. T3 and T4 are released into the blood. As they are lipid soluble, they pass through the membrane and no transporter is required here. Mono and diiodotyrosines are deiodinated and iodine thus released is reutilized. So this is the entire process. Let's have a quick summary. First, iodide uptake by sodium iodide symporter. Then its transport into the lumen by pendrin. Parallel synthesis of thyroglobulin. Its release into the colloid. Oxidation of iodide into iodine. Iodination of tyrosine residues to form mono and diiodotyrosines. Coupling of these residues to form T3 and T4. Endocytosis of thyroglobulin. Its hydrolysis by lysosomal enzymes. Release of T3 and T4 into the blood. T4 being in much larger quantity as compared to T3. And deiodination of mono and diiodotyrosines. And reutilization of iodide. That's it for synthesis of thyroid hormones. If you found this video helpful, please share it with your colleagues. And don't forget to subscribe because lots more to come. See you in next video. Thank you.